It's incredibly empowering to do something that you didn't think that you could do. This is the one thing that gives me stability. Dream about what my life is going to be like after Shakespeare. I have a family here in Shakespeare. Redemption is in each story. In prison, we want redemption. Shakespeare really helps fill people up here. Welcome to Theater Incarcerated, a podcast based in Western Washington University in Bellingham, Washington. I'm Ada. I'm Aiden. I'm Katie. Each episode will explore a theater company, program, or project working directly with incarcerated people across America. Our mission is to listen and learn, radically shifting our perception of theater one prison at a time. I think it's interesting how most of our exposure to the prison system is through mainstream media, whether it's CNN or a Netflix special, our perspective on incarcerated persons is controlled by white institutions. I'm interested to see how looking into Shakespeare in prison will help all of us learn a little bit more about some of those misconceptions we got from mainstream media. And this is not a podcast that just looks at prisons. It's about a company working towards bettering the incarceration system through theater and through Shakespeare. Yeah, and Shakespeare has definitely gained a reputation for being stuffy and pretentious, but a lot of his themes are still very relevant, and I'm really excited to see what these incarcerated people are taking from his works. What I'm curious to hear is why they think it fits so well in this space. What does versatility in Shakespeare actually mean? I I think it's pretty amazing just thinking about how Shakespeare's always seen as some sort of you know, highbrow type of thing that only some people can understand. So I think it's pretty revolutionary to take that and just put it in the hands of everyday people and see how they put their own voices into that. We basically never hear the voices of real people who've been incarcerated, so I think that's a big deal. This episode, we're talking with Franny Shepard Bates from Detroit Public Theater's Shakespeare in Prison program. I had the pleasure of interviewing Franny Shepard Bates, founder and facilitator of Shakespeare in Prison at the Detroit Public Theater. I asked her to briefly describe the program and its goals. We work with incarcerated people to use theater and Shakespeare as a means of developing empowerment. We have several models, but our flagship model is at Women's Huron Valley uh, Correctional Facility, which is Michigan's only women's prison. What we do there with them is uh, we work with them for about 40 weeks on one play by Shakespeare. Franny then detailed her history as a theater artist. She started out as an actress. I have a BFA in pretend, is what I like to say. She soon realized she wasn't going to be satisfied with a career in acting, so she decided to focus on teaching and directing, but not in a typical setting. I was raised with a really strong sense of social justice, the need to take whatever it is you do and then make, make, make the world a better place. And when I learned about some theater for social justice movements, I was really inspired by that. When she started working in prisons, however, she was confronted with her own misconceptions and lack of knowledge regarding the prison system. I hadn't really considered prison as, a, as its own thing or the larger carceral state. So when I went in there, I really thought that I was this unbiased person. I swiftly discovered that that I didn't know that much about prison system and that I did have some biases that I needed to work through. Because I went in there and I said on day one to the women who, who showed up that day, I don't know what I'm doing, so I need your help. So they taught me a lot. It was kind of learning to not just try to keep in, keep in mind this philosophy of empathy, but to really practice it without effort. For me, it's been an education in not just learning like what humans are capable of in terms of their courage in really assessing what has happened in their past and and then also learning not to let it define them, to keep it in mind and to learn from it and to go forward and do better. So there's all that good squishy humanity stuff. And then there's this, this more concrete, here's what the problems are, here's what causes them. I have no idea how to solve them, but at least I know more about what is going on here. She explained why she chose to bring Shakespeare into prisons and why it is applicable to the people there. For me, the reason that I chose Shakespeare and and continue to choose Shakespeare, and our ensembles continue to say we don't want to do anything but Shakespeare, is because, for one thing, if you've been beaten down all your life and been told you're stupid and you're not talented and you can't do certain things, then even just sitting down with Shakespeare on the page, reading through something, taking a stab at what it might mean and realizing that you did understand it, within 20 minutes it can change people's lives. There's this thing that Shakespeare is above a lot of people. 
And as soon as folks realize that it's not, that can be really empowering in and of itself. In Shakespeare, you can find any human emotion or experience that there is. So you can really see yourself in the characters and situations because you know those people. One woman, she was arrested and incarcerated for um, embezzling a large amount of money. It was one of those things where she started small and just kind of kept going. So she ended up, when we were reading with Beth, she could see this guy who was kind of hesitant to do something he knew was wrong, did one little thing, and then it just, it just keeps snowballing from there. And she found that by really investigating that she, in finding Macbeth's objectives and tactics, she was able to take another look at her own. There's the collaborative aspect of, of theater. And when you've got the challenge of Shakespeare, it intensifies that you have to work even harder together. There's so many reasons to do Shakespeare. Franny's official title in the program is facilitator. I asked her to elaborate on why she chose that word. Because no one's in charge. So in a prison setting, there's this really rigid hierarchy. And volunteers, we, according to the prison, right, we rank above the people who are incarcerated there. And depending on what their life experiences have been, how long they've been incarcerated, or just from the fact of being incarcerated, these folks are really used to being at the bottom of a hierarchy. They're really used to deferring to other people and to it being that their ideas do not matter. No one wants to listen to them and best to just defer to those people in power. And so we come in and say, look, I mean, ultimately, yeah, we, we outrank you guys, but within our creative process, we do not outrank you. And we have some more experience in theater. We don't have the experience you have. And we have nothing to teach you because our whole thing is that because Shakespeare is for everyone, nobody has to tell you what it means. I asked her what the most surprising thing about this program has been. Gosh, I don't know. I feel like I went in with a lot of like hopes and theories, and most of them have been borne out by experience. There can have a larger impact than just putting on a play. People will gain such confidence, they will go for their GED, or they'll start college classes or they'll go for some vocational training, things they didn't think they could do before. Franny wrapped it up really nicely with some of the major takeaways from this project. One thing does not define a person. There, there is no such thing as an irredeemable human. Everybody has that innate potential to do the very worst things that a person can do and the things that nobody would think that you'd be capable of, including yourself. That can be accomplished through the arts and through theater specifically. Theater Incarcerated is produced by Katie Dreesen, Aiden Stevens, and Ada Stewart. Our music is composed by Chad Crouch. The audio used in our intro is of ensemble members' testimonials from a video on the Shakespeare in Prison website. Special thanks to AJ and the Student Tech Center, Franny Shepard Bates and the Detroit Public Theater, Cam Reed Chapman and the Department of Theater and Dance at Western Washington University. <laughs>